a contributing factor to our juvenile delinquency of today. Rock and roll has got to go. That was 30 years ago. What's happening now? Good evening, I'm Ted Koppel, and this is Nightline. A lot of people think it's finally gone too far and want music, like movies, to be rated for taste. Among our guests, Donny Osmond and Frank Zappa. This is ABC News Nightline. Reporting from Washington, Ted Koppel. In the world of music videos, tonight's MTV Music Awards ceremony in New York is what the Emmys are to television and the Oscars are to movies. It is the music video industry honoring its own. For the record, no pun intended, Bruce Springsteen won the award for best stage performance, beating out Tina Turner and David Bowie. A number of the songs up for recognition tonight have been receiving a great deal of recognition in recent weeks and not the most approving kind. Simply stated, a lot of people, and they are becoming increasingly vocal, find the songs and the rock video performances that go with them offensive. Even if your tolerance for explicit language is relatively high, you're quite likely to find them offensive also. Our dilemma in focusing on the subject was this. How explicit were we going to get? Well, we have left out some of the most offensive material, but what's been left in, if John Denver and Frank Sinatra are your speed, is still likely to curl your hair. But understand, these songs are routinely played on radio stations, and if you have cable, more likely than not, your kids have already seen and heard what some of you will see and hear for the first time tonight. Here's Nightline correspondent Jeff Greenfield. It's 11.30 p.m. Do you know where your children are? Well, maybe they're listening to a song by the heavy metal band Judas Priest, a song called Eat Me Alive. think this subject matter is totally inappropriate and that's why we're making a fuss. One group of parents has heard more than enough. The Parents Music Resource Center wants a labeling system for albums and tapes, much like movies are rated today. Later this month, a Senate committee will hold hearings on the question. A tribute to the clout of the center, whose members include Susan Baker, wife of Treasury Secretary James Baker. At least the movie industry has given us labels so we can know what we're in for when we go to a movie. We have some idea. With music, you have none. It's music like Prince's song, Darling Nikki, that Susan Baker has in mind. I met a girl named Nikki. Guess you could say she was a sex fiend. I met her in a hotel lobby, masturbating with a magazine. I'm not saying that I admire most of these lyrics. Journalist Nat Hento, a passionate civil libertarian. Uh, many of them are, are, are not songs at all. They're just words thrown against the wall. And some of them are kind of disgusting. But who's supposed to decide? Who's, who draws the line? Love for sale. Drawing the line has always been a question. Radio stations banned Cole Porter's love for sale half a century ago. And the great blues singer Bessie Smith had more than her share of outraged critics. The obscenity and vulgarity. Why you don't know what to do to me to but it was the arrival of rock and roll 30 years ago, raw, powerful music for black adults that was adopted by white teenagers that really focused outrage. It is a contributing factor to our juvenile delinquency of today. You got what I need. It's a controversy that has stalked acts from the Rolling Stones and the Beatles to Tina Turner. I want you, I want you to give it to me. A whole generation of Americans was raised on the belief that the Kingsman's hit, Louie Louie, contained obscene lyrics. Oh, 
An exhaustive FCC study concluded that no matter how the song was played, it was utterly incomprehensible. Yes, rock and roll music has always stirred fear and loathing in the hearts and minds of the elders. In fact, the very phrase rock and roll, like the word jazz, was originally slang for the sex act. But it's also true that the rock music of an earlier time has nothing, absolutely nothing, in common with some of the songs of today. It's not like the music of the 50s. We need to quit hiding behind that excuse that this is no different. It's very different. Jeff Ling, a minister who works with the Parents Resource Center, listens to and plays rock and roll, but he's concerned about albums like Be My Slave. Inside, there's lyrics like, come on, slap my face, the way you gag me, the way you give me pain. Some women like violent sex, and I think that they have a right to hear about it. Frank Zappa is one of the few rock artists to come out openly against the labeling effort. I mean, if it looks like censorship and it smells like censorship, it is censorship, no matter whose wife is talking about it, it's censorship. Beyond the moral issue, there's a pragmatic question. Will labeling keep offensive lyrics away from children or actually promote sales of controversial songs? Kids go after what's cool. They're going to go to an R-rated movie before they go to a, a PG over a G because it's cool. And if you censor it, it's going to be more cool to buy the uh, hardcore lyrics. Are these the kinds of messages you want to send to your young people who are in a formative stage, who often look at rock stars as role models? We think this is very harmful. Clearly some of the rock music today is much more explicit than it was 10 or 20 years ago, but our culture as a whole has grown more coarse. Words and images in books, movies, magazines, even advertising is all more explicit than it was 10 or 20 years ago. But given what's happened throughout the rest of the mass media, maybe the real question is whether any attempts at control will have any more chance of succeeding in the field of rock music. This is Jeff Greenfield for Nightline in New York. Later, we'll be joined by pop star Donny Osmond, but next, when we return, we'll talk with Candy Stroud, spokesperson for the parents group that wants to rate pop records. And on the other side of the issue, Frank Zappa, a rock innovator who's never been at a loss for words or music. Among the most successful albums condemned by the Parents Music Resource Center are Dirty Mind by Prince, Twisted Sisters' Stay Hungry, which has sold more than two million copies, and Madonna's Like a Virgin, a former number one record which has been on the charts for 41 weeks. This is ABC News Nightline, brought to you by Sears. Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention. His underground hits carried such classic titles as Susie Cream Cheese, Brown Shoes Don't Make It, and Call Any Vegetable, plus several with lyrics that we'd have trouble quoting. In the early 70s, Zappa and his group were banned from the Royal Albert Hall in London in a dispute over obscenity. Frank Zappa joins us now, live in our Los Angeles bureau. And joining us in our Washington studio, Candy Stroud, freelance journalist and spokesperson for the Parents Music Resource Center, which is campaigning for a rating system for pop albums and tapes. Frank, give me a sense of limits. Are there any? Well, first of all, I have to correct something you just said. The suit with the Royal Albert Hall was a breach of contract suit, not an obscenity suit. Okay. okay. Now, let's, now let's move to the subject at hand. Are, are there limits? Yeah. Should, well, there, should I, there be? Any kind of limits? Um, yes, I think there should. And uh, those limits that you're talking about for sexual information for children are a matter for parents to decide for themselves. So if parents want to have a better sense, something that in one form or another makes them better educated to make that kind of choice, why stand in the way of it? Because uh, what the PM PMRC is suggesting in terms of remedies for the problem are roughly the equivalent of saying, well, this man has dandruff, so we're going to cure it by cutting his head off. Their, their proposals are really dumb if you take away the, the uh, aroma and look at the mechanics of what they are, and they're also very dangerous in terms of uh, what they can lead to for violating your right to free speech, your right to assemble, because they want to apply the same ratings to live concerts, and uh, the right to due process for people. For example, if you're a songwriter and you have a song included on an album that gets an X, 
and through no fault of your own, the album is banned from stores or the sales of it are uh, impinged on in some way, you don't have a chance. Uh, the analogy you draw is a colorful one, but why is it any different, for example, than rating movies and saying if you are below a certain age, you can't go to see such and such a movie unless accompanied by adult, and in some cases not at all, unless you are of a certain age? Well, I think that in, in law, when they deal with matters pertaining to the First Amendment, that a lawyer told me this, that you're supposed to look for the least restrictive option. And in this case, the least restrictive option would be this, to realize that rock and roll is not written or performed for people with conservative taste. And there's no reason why the morals or the taste buds of somebody who's married to a DC superstar should be a model to impinge on the rights of people who are not children. All right, Candy Stroud, you're a journalist in addition to being a spokesperson for this group uh, and I'm sure are also concerned about impinging on the rights of free speech. Where do you draw the line? Clearly not in the same direction as, as Frank Zappa. Well, certainly nobody's talking about censorship, uh, Ted. Uh, nobody's talking about taking away anybody's First Amendment rights. Not I yet. think and never will. Uh, oh, come on, Candy. Excuse me, just let me finish. I think what's most important is that parents be given some sort of information as they are given in the movies. We're talking about consumer information, packaging, labeling, so that if a parent goes to a record store uh, he, and to buy a record for a child, he doesn't come home with a record by Prince that, that contains lyrics about masturbation or incest or oral sex. Candy, you've got a bunch of kids. How many times do you go out and buy records for them? How many times do they buy records not for not often enough as far as my children are concerned I don't, think, I, don't I mean the uh, only reason I make the point is not to draw attention to you but I don't think most of us buy records for our kids well, they I go do. out and buy their own I do I certainly go out uh, for Christmas and for their birthdays oh, because sure. they like t tapes and I must tell you that uh, I was just as uninformed as many parents are in this country today and went out and bought Sheena Easton and bought uh, Prince and uh, bought uh, Frankie Goes to Hollywood for one of my children's friends without knowing that Frankie Goes to Hollywood was about gay sex, that Sheena Easton was about uh, orgasm and arousal, and that Prince was singing about a, ma a woman masturbating in a hotel lobby with a magazine. All right, but Parents let us, but let us, Candy, but let us, Candy, for a moment, be realistic about kids. And let me raise the point that was raised earlier in Jeff Greenfield's piece, and that is many kids will be, and in fact, I think uh, Donny Osmond was the one who raised it, many kids, in fact, are going to go out, and if they see a PG rating or an X rating or an R rating on an album, they're going to go for the one with the highest okay. rating simply because it's there. Ted, I don't think so. I think there is no rating system that is infallible. A rating system is only as good as the parents who are involved. If you are going to allow your children to watch any movie that they want to or buy any magazine that they want to, you're not doing your job as a parent. A parent has got to be uh, vigilant about what their children are, are seeing and listening to. Unfortunately, now it seems that uh, records are going to be, have to be added to the list of uh, what a parent has to monitor in their home. But I don't think that, uh, that certainly the rating system for movies, Ted, has been extremely successful and I think that has been given a bad rap. Um, kids are not allowed by most parents or by many parents to go out and, and see X-rated movies or R-rated movies. All right, Candy, we've got to take a break. When we come back, we'll be joined by a pop star whom even parents like to listen to, Donny Osmond. His first single was Sweet and Innocent, which might tell you something about where Donny Osmond was coming from. Along with his years co-hosting the Donny and Marie show on ABC, he has 12 gold albums to his credit. Donny Osmond is with us now, live from our Los Angeles bureau. And I'm sorry about saying that parents like your records. That's probably totally destroyed your career, right? No, no, that's fine, Ted. That's fine. It is a problem, isn't it? I mean, if you get to be known as too wholesome in, in this day and age, and if the music that you sing and the lyrics are too wholesome, that can destroy you, can't it? Okay, now that's, that's the very reason why I'm doing this program right now. I, I understand Susan's point of view. I understand what they're trying to do. But like, uh, like I said earlier in the tape, uh, in a couple years, I think it's going to slap them in the face because think about it. What has happened to the film industry with the rating system? You know, if, if you slap a rating system onto the albums, that means I'm going to have to try like crazy to avoid a G-rated album. And in no way... Is Donny Osmond going to be coming out with a G-rated album? Because um, because the music... no, one, no one will buy it. Well, absolutely. The kids look, won't look, buy the, it. 
Well, it's death. It's death to a film producer to produce a G-rated film nowadays. So it's they, sad. So they do sad. what? They go for the R. They go for the PG. That's where the money is. You mean they throw in a see, little gratuitous see, Ted, sex, a little dirty language? Exactly, and... exactly. Look, look, Ted, this is what's going to happen, in my opinion. The writers are now going to have to start putting into their lyric content some suggestiveness to avoid that rating system. You know what I'm saying? I want to be able to just put good music on the album. I don't want to have to be forced to, to put, the, put that suggestive lyric in there. You know what I'm saying? Candy, that's coming at it from a, from a different direction, isn't it? Uh, and, I, and I realize that can't be the primary focus of your concern, but it has to be part of it. That is certainly what has happened to movies. Ted, I, I would uh, just like to comment that uh, our rating system for the movies is certainly better than what we had before. Nothing. At least a rating system gives a parent the opportunity to say to a child, look, this is a movie we don't think that you should see until you're a little older. A rating system for records, would it make kids go out and buy those albums? I think if a child comes into the house with a, an X-rated album or an R-rated album, that a parent has the opportunity to take a look at that and say, this has a, a rating on it that we don't feel is appropriate for you at this well, age. Well, first of all, well, first of all, Susan, you're not going to have that kid showing it's, that it's, album it's, if it's, it's X-rated. It's candy, Donnie, forgive me. But that's all right. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Candy. <laughs> Any name will do. Go uh, ahead. You can't tell them apart, can you? <laughs> <laughs> you're not, first of all, the child is going to hide that album like crazy because it has an X-rated uh, label slapped on it. Well, Donnie, you know, I, Donnie, I think you have to be able to trust your children. I trust my children. I know okay, that that's what the very point. That's, that's the very point. That Candy. is the that is you, the uh, point. But as a mother, I have to be able to. This is an issue that will to... break families apart as they argue over the rating of the album. <laughs> why it's absolutely terrible. This is an anti-family issue. I don't issue. think. Okay, but I don't think you can legislate people to be good. But we're not talking Parents about don't... legislation, Donnie. We're talking about a voluntary rating system on the part of the music industry as there is a voluntary mm. rating system in the movie industry. Well, hold on a second I think there, Candy. Let me, let, me, let me at least warn you about the slippery slope that I, that I see you starting down on. What about the radio stations that are now carrying these albums? They're unrated albums, but is that radio station going to be able to go on carrying it once it's got an <laughs> X rating on it? Hopefully the radio stations will begin to cooperate like radio stations have all around the country. Uh, like cooperation is a nicer word than censorship, but the end result but is no, the same, isn't But it? Ted, you know, nobody is talking about censorship here. The reason you don't talk about it is because you don't want people to know the truth. It's the same Republican stonewall crap that you've been doing all along. Hey, no, I'm not a Republican. Is Listen, there is, there is no censorship If it smells censorship like a Republican, involved. it's a Republican. <laughs> there, is no, there is no censorship involved here. It is strictly... Public and the emperor information. isn't wearing any clothes either. All right. I don't, wait a second. I'll tell you what, Frank. I, you, you're an intelligent man who makes some good points. Make them. Let's not start name calling because it's okay, just going to waste what little time we've point, got. Go because ahead. Here's, here's the lie about censorship. It started already. Record retailers have already told record companies if you send us any album with any sticker on it, we won't rack it. Another chain with 400 stores in malls in the United States has been told by the shopping mall association owners, if you rack hard-rated albums, we're going to cancel your lease. That's censorship. Well, explain something to me. What in heaven's name is the difference? I mean, enough people now know, certainly I think Candy Stroud and the group that she represents have done an excellent job in alerting parents, at least parents have a right to know, in alerting parents to what kinds of lyrics are involved in these songs. What's the difference? Okay. If they start if putting the pressure about on now and say, get it off the stands. Look, if they're talking about masturbation, point one, it's not illegal. And people do it from the cradle to the grave. If it's not illegal to do it, why should it be illegal to sing about it? It's not a question of legality. Well, go ahead, Donnie. You, you jump in. Well, I'm just going to have to disagree with that because, personally, I believe that shouldn't be on the marketplace. I don't think you're going to stop stuff like that. It's always going to be out there. But what are you going to do, put handcuffs on everybody who wants to record those kinds of lyrics? I don't think we're attacking the, the base of the problem here. The base of the problem lies down with, with the, uh, the executives of the record company. You know, no, they've got to understand. Go, um, go ahead, Donnie, finish your they're, point. They're, 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 re they're, releasing, they're releasing the stuff on the marketplace. The record and, executives. And, and what do you put music appreciation back into schools, one of the things they cut out during the budget cuts, it um, would help out. All right, but what Ted. is it, what is it, uh, Donny Osmond, if you can hear me, what is it you are suggesting then that happened with regard to the record producers, that they not put these records out? Because that really is a form of prior restraint then, isn't it? Uh, okay, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I don't have all the answers, Ted. Okay, what I'm saying is that uh, maybe there should be a limit on how much of this should be on the marketplace. I think and that's... And I'm also saying... Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead? Yeah. But, but I'm also saying that parents... And this is exactly what Candy's doing, and I commend her for it. 
should make parents aware of how important it is to teach their kids at such a younger age. I mean, it, it appalls me to see the complacency of parents nowadays that by the time they're teenagers, they say, oh, we got to start teaching them what's right and what's wrong. All right, folks, right. I, 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 I'll tell you what, let me, let me give our affiliates a warning because we're going to go over tonight. Okay. Because I, I don't want to just go over once over lightly on this subject, and I think each of you has something interesting and useful to say. We'll continue this discussion in just a moment. 1945, two American colonels proposed that Korea be politically divided at the 38th parallel, a mistake of major consequence. Now, Dean Rusk, one of those colonels, tells how it happened. 4585, see how the future began, Wednesday on ABC. And we're back once again with Candy Stroud, Donny Osmond, and Frank Zappa. Frank Zappa, I, I realize you've spent a good deal of your professional life enjoying outraging people. That's all right. There's a, there's a useful role for it. You've done it in a very entertaining way, and you're a very intelligent man. Is there any way, however, by which you can come a step or two in Candy Stroud's direction without feeling that you've lost all your credentials? No, it's not a matter of credentials. It's a matter of sanity, because what they're proposing is so pitifully... Well, it's dangerous, besides being pitiful. The, what the is, machinery... What is, what is dangerous about a packaging <clears throat> label? What's dangerous no, about having... No, it's the tactics a... that you're using. Look, first of all, the first time I debated you, they chopped the debate up, and I'm glad to be able to do it without editing, all right? Now, I want to say one thing to anybody who wants to know what they're really doing here. This is supposed to go to a fact-finding committee in Congress on Thursday, right? The, the chairman of the committee has a wife on the PMRC. There's two senators on the committee that have wives in the PMRC. I called the PMRC office today to ask the question, who else belongs to the PMRC? And you know what the answer was? We don't have any members. We only have founders. And then I said, I have your fundraising letter. You're a, t a tax uh, deductible organization. When they gave you your tax-free number, what kind of an organization was it? Is it a cult? What do you got here? What is going on? You know, I, I, I'd just like to comment at, at this point that um, one of the founding members of the group is uh, Tipper Gore, the wife of Senator Albert Gore, who happens to be the co-sponsor of the legislation against pi uh, for pi uh, anti-piracy laws for the music industry. Senator Gore is on the side of the music industry, okay? So, I mean, I don't think that there's any kind of... Uh... I don't speak for the music industry. I am a parent who is concerned about his children and the First Amendment. The music industry has sold out the singers, the songwriters, and the retailers by bending over for you guys and voluntarily putting on any kind of a okay. sticker. Okay, let me just, let me just uh, say something about that, uh, Ted and, and Frank. And incidentally, there... Donnie, if you want to get in on this, you've got to push hard. Okay. Okay. Listen, uh, Ted, there, there are, you know, what the music industry is suggesting is really a continuation of the status quo. For example, here's an album by Marvin Gaye. We can't, okay? see, we can't see it. Okay, Mar go ahead. By Alvin Gaye, Dream of a Lifetime. It says, this album contains lyrical content that may be considered offensive to some listeners. Here is an album by Dougie Fresh that says, warning, sexually explicit lyrics. Uh, Prince's album, Dirty Minds, contains a warning label. But, but uh, by the same token, Prince's album, uh, Controversy, does not. What's happening is that in the music industry right now, there is labeling, but it's inconsistent. It is not uniform. It is not standard. I think what the Parents Music Resource Center would like to see is some sort of uniform code so that what is offensive for Warner Brothers album, uh, records is offensive for Atlantic and offensive for Columbia. Frank Zappa, that's you, not you, the extent uh, Frank, of their demands. Frank, hold on just a second. You mentioned a moment ago that you were here as a concerned parent and as someone who's concerned about the First Amendment. You've spoken right. eloquently about that second part, the First Amendment. I want to hear you speak now as a concerned parent. There are limits, aren't there? I mean, a 12-year-old kid, a 13-year-old kid is not quite able to handle some of the same stuff that you and I can handle, for example. First of all, there are plenty of nice little books that explain, little books with nice little pictures that will teach very young children the mechanics of sex. If they understand the mechanics of sex, then if they hear something, uh, a reference to something that you might think of as aberrated, they will recognize it as an aberration. And the parent has a responsibility to, to give that information to their children. And if they okay. hear it from someone like you, whom perhaps they admire or like very much, perhaps they don't consider the aberration to be quite that bad. 
Well, let's talk about something like that. First of all, I resent the way in which you're trying to make me out to be somebody who's, you know, in the aberrated vein. No, no, no. I'm, Look, I'm, 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 forget you. You want to pick someone else? Pick another star. Pick yeah, someone gonna... that is an idol. Pick Prince. Pick uh, Sheila East. I mean, you know, I no, don't no, care. No, no, I mean, no. Let's, you like. let, let's take a look at country and western, which is a form of music that the husband and wife team from Tennessee do not want to rate. You realize there is no demand for any ratings on country and western albums at all. This is protectionist legislation for Nashville. As Tell me as about the kinky sex in country and western now. Look, they do have lyrics that are referring to sexual activities. You know, these people are going, oh, sex, it's going to kill us all. But the fact of the matter is, you talk about role models, these albums are mixed but, but, in a way okay. that you can hear every word sung to you by people who have been to prison and are proud of okay, it. Okay, but, but Frank, but Frank, Frank we're not, you know, we're not talking Gary, let's, about... Let's, uh, uh, Candy, let's give Donnie a chance to get in here. But Frank, I, I, I disagree with you on that. I don't think a little teenager should be watching MTV or, or wherever it's on and be uh, educated from the television about masturbation. I don't think that's where it should come from. And, and forget about that for a moment. Uh, you don't, it's, it's not just the masturbation that we're talking about. I mean, some of these lyrics, and, and I'm sure you're as familiar with them as I am, and I've become very familiar with them over the last week or so, because we've been agonizing over what we're going to put on this broadcast and what we're not going to put on. Some of it has some of the most violent, way out kind of sex. I'm talking about chainsaw type material. All right. May and, I... and, you know, that's not the kind of stuff that you want your kids to, 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 to become familiar with, is it, Frank? No, I want them to be able to laugh about it. I want them to see that for what Ted. it is. Well, I, Ted, you know, may I, maybe may I'd I... laugh a little harder if there weren't so many snuff movies out and, and if this were not a reality in our lives today. Well, I don't go to snuff movies, exists. so I don't know snuff movie statistics. But I'm telling you, if you keep a child sexually ignorant, he is more likely to become a victim of a child molester. Ted, Look at this. How can you tell a kid about a weenie wagger unless he knows what a weenie is? Look, Ted, you know, this is this album, uh, this is an album by Wasp, okay? Wasp has just signed a contract with Capitol Records for one and a half million dollars. Here is their album, I F U C K Like a Beast, Animal. And, and is this the kind of album that you want your child to come home with? No. What about Motley Crue? Motley Crue has albums that sell uh, double platinum albums, which talk about killing. Not a woman, but a whore. Right, I can Candy, taste I'll, the hate. I'll tell you what, I think we got the idea, and we've had enough examples of it during the course of it, that we know what kind of thing we're talking about. So what's the final point? Let's wrap it up. Go ahead. The final point is that children should be educated by their parents, not by rock stars. And that parents have the responsibility to raise their children to understand that love is a tender and caring uh, emotion, not one that destroys and defiles. We don't want to drag our children's minds through the muds. We want to enlighten them and ennoble them. All right, but on the issue now of the rating system, which, believe it or not, is why we decided to do this broadcast tonight, <laughs> what's your point? On the rating system is that something has to be done. A line has been crossed, and the rock industry has gone too far. I think that they admit that they've gone too far, and it's time for some self-restraint. Donny Osmond? Well, I look at the point of view as... Uh, I think you're bringing more attention to it than it needs. If you come up with a rating system, it's going to target an audience to that X rated or whatever, however it's labeled. And a person like myself, who does not want to come out with a Sugar Walls type of song, I want the music to speak for itself, because right now, my album has sounded pretty good. I don't want to have to go back there and put in lyrics to avoid the G rating. Frank Zappa. I think that you should remember, no one is holding a gun to anyone's head saying you must listen to uh, I F U blah 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 like a beast or uh, Sugar Walls. You, you are not obliged to buy this material. There's plenty of instrumental music with no words at all. If you don't want to have your children exposed to anything that you think is dangerous, try classical music, try jazz, try putting music education back into schools so kids know that there is another form of music other than rock and roll and give them a choice during their formative years. Right now, all they see broadcast is rock and roll. You don't get very much exposure for other types. So I think there's an educational problem involved and you don't need to go to the extreme of censorship and violating the civil rights of people who are not children. All right. I thank all of you for joining us tonight. Interesting discussion. The topic on This Week with David Brinkley Sunday is AIDS and the public schools. That's our report for tonight. I'm Ted Koppel in Washington. For all of us here at ABC News, good night.